mine forever, I guess. She just laid there and kind of moaned. She made groaning noises. But just don't move her. Don't move her. I was even afraid that she was going to die. Sherry, everything's going to be all right. We're here. Someone at the scene who recognized the victim as Sherry Hagen had immediately called her husband Rick. It was just an empty feeling, not knowing what had happened, how bad it was. She looked up to me, and all she could keep repeating was, "This is, are those kids okay? Are those kids okay? You know, and that, that'll be in my, etched in my mind forever, I guess. Denny Parton was the first paramedic on the scene. I give her a quick once over. I listen to her chest, because supposedly this is where she had most of the trauma. The, the car had run up onto her chest, so I'm really very worried about internal injuries. Her main complaint at this time is not her breathing. She's complaining a lot of severe spinal pain right in the middle of her back. She's also complaining of some tingling and some paralysis going down her lower extremities. She cannot move her legs as well as I think somebody should be able to, probably due to the injury to her spine. I felt like if I had not left the kids there, this wouldn't have happened. So there was a, a real sense of feeling responsible for what had taken place. At nearby Mission Hills Hospital, doctors began running a series of tests to determine the extent of Sherry's injuries. You got the other IV in there? Yeah. This is going to hurt. Big out's coming right now. Oh. Squeeze my hand. Oh. Pat Thomason, the administrator who was our friend, just come up and, and put her arm around me and said, it doesn't get, look good, Rick. It, she's really in bad shape. We may lose her. Sherry was airlifted 60 miles to the trauma unit of Mercy Hospital, where she was put under the care of Dr. Timothy Chest Grody. Tubes, meaning tubes between her ribs and outside her lungs. Have been Broken ribs had punctured her left lung. X-rays also revealed a crushed vertebrae pressing against her spinal cord. She needed surgery, but was not yet stable enough to survive it. The mortality rate is 20 to 30 percent of those people will die from complications of being that ill. So it's one thing to get there and get stabilized, it's another to get through the rocky course that comes with the injuries. How do you tell your kids that, that there's a possibility that they lost their mother? And I guess the biggest problem of, of trying to explain it was it's, it, wasn't, it wasn't a disease and it wasn't a car wreck. It was a situation where she was trying to save, trying to save somebody else's life. On the ninth night, further complications set in. For some reason, there was either a clog in the tubing or a blockage in her lungs. Sherry, what's wrong? Just relax, Sherry. Are you not getting enough air? Okay, so you're breathing down. Rick, you want to just, Rick, you gotta leave. I need some help. Then over the PA system, you hear code blue for room 162. The tube had been pulled from her right chest because the, it had seen that the air leak had sealed when the lung collapsed again on the right side. And in fact, her heart quit. Let's get another tube in here so we can reintubate her. Atropine again? She's still getting. Okay, we have a rhythm now. Atropine was given, which is a drug to stimulate the heart. What's the rhythm? She's nice this way on the monitor. Chest compressions. We need to move this no tube, too. She's not moving any air. Epinephrine in. Epinephrine's in. I feel the pulse. Okay, stop. Okay, we got a rhythm. Stop. Stop the Rhythm's back. She's okay. back at 68. 68. There's a marked difference in breath sounds. Fortunately, she was a young, healthy person, and the rhythm was reestablished. Okay. When Dr. Grody came out, to tell me that, the, that she was okay or what had stabilized again. And, you know, and I could see that he was, has had the scare of his life too. Two weeks later, doctors were finally able to remove the bone fragments from Sherry's spine, but they were unsure whether she'd ever walk again. Mm -hmm. 
I don't really resent what happened to me. I think part of the reason for that is because I have made such a complete recovery. This incident has restored my faith in human nature. When I was in the hospital, I mean, I probably got 20 cards a day. And they were all from people, you know, a lot of them, I didn't even know who they were. She's a very giving person. I wouldn't begrudge her if she did it again, and I'm sure she would do it if she was capable to do it again. She's a hero. I'm proud of her. Sherry Hagen was awarded the prestigious Carnegie Medal of Honor for risking her life to try to save three children she did not know. One year later, she finally got a chance to meet them. Hi, Sherry. You look wonderful. Thanks. I do watch what I do with the kids, not just with the car, but I find myself a lot more alert to the possibility of danger now with anything that they do. I wish that, you know, her injuries wouldn't have happened, but I am really grateful that she was there and that she was willing to help my kids. I guess I felt like I had to do something because I'm not the kind of person that would be able to sleep at night if I would have stood there and that car would have went onto the highway and those children would have been hurt. I just wish I could have been a bit more coordinated doing it so that I wouldn't have gotten hurt so badly. But I sleep fine at night now. <laughs>